Add this city to the list of places I visited and immediately thought, I have to make an episode here. Stockholm is effortlessly appealing. From its cobbled old town, to its food halls, to its cosmopolitan center, this city has so much of what I look for in a destination. Scattered across islands, intertwined by bridges, Stockholm is a city I've visited many times for work and pleasure, but I am always excited to arrive here. Stockholm has three airports, Arlanda, the main international airport, Broma, which is exclusively for regional and domestic traffic, and Skavsta, which is almost exclusively the domain of low-cost carriers like Ryanair and Wizz Air. They're all great airports, but be warned, Skavsta is nearly 100 kilometers outside of Stockholm, so don't even think about taking a taxi. In fact, the best way to get into Stockholm proper from Skavsta and Broma is by airport coach. The journey from Broma takes about 20 minutes and costs 79 krona. From Skavsta, a ticket purchased at the airport will cost 179 krona for the 80 to 90 minute journey into town. But what about Arlanda? Like the other two airports, there are coaches available. Flibugusarna will get you into town in 45 minutes for 119 krona, or 99 if you buy online ahead of time. Suibus offers a similar service for 72 krona. Neither service take cash on board, so bear that in mind. Or you can do what we're doing and hop on the Arlanda Express. Trains run every 15 minutes from the lower level of each terminal, and you'll be in central Stockholm in 20 minutes. Now, it is a lot more expensive than a bus, 320 krona for one way, but it's also a lot faster. And yes, I know that Stockholm technically has four airports, but Vasteris is over 100 kilometers from Stockholm and only serves one airline, Ryanair, to one destination, Stansted. So I figure we've got most of you covered with the other three. The Greater Stockholm Archipelago is made up of over 24,000 islands and islets. The city itself is spread across 14 islands, which are connected by over 50 bridges. Now that may sound complicated and intimidating to try and navigate, but the city's broad arsenal of public transport will get you all over this cold, really fucking cold city. <laughs> we'll get you all over it with no worries. This is why it feels so cold. This, this obelisk shows humidity and it's very humid right now. And when there's more moisture in the air, it feels colder. Uh, even if the temperature number on the thermometer stays exactly the same, but it feels much colder because it's very humid. One organization administers almost all of Stockholm's public transport, which makes life much easier. There's a unified ticketing system called SL Access, and if you're going to be in the city for more than a few hours, it's worth getting one of these, an SL Pass. They come in increments of 1, 3, 7, and 30 days, and you can buy them from any of the information kiosks in any T-Bana station. The Tunnelbana, colloquially referred to as the T-Bana, is Stockholm's metro system. There are exactly 100 stations across the entire city and out into the inner suburbs as well. The system runs from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. on weekdays and all night on weekends. As I mentioned, the city is spread across several islands, and while the bridges are great, everybody loves a good bridge, ferries are by far the best way to get between the islands. SL run a handful of ferry services, which means it's included on your SL pass, and Google Maps will include ferries in direction, so you don't even need to think at all. It's magic. Add trams, buses, suburban rail, and light rail into the mix, and you have a very robust public transport network that will get you pretty much anywhere you need to go in Stockholm. Just make sure you tap in at the start of your journey. There's no need to tap out. But bear in mind, you can also use your debit or credit card to buy a ticket right on the card reader at the barrier. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare, an online community with thousands of classes that you can learn from. And what better way to continue your momentum in 2023 than by picking up a new skill? Believe it or not, I have been doing this myself. I wanted to create more attache content this year, but there's only one problem. I don't know how to edit. 
No problem. Skillshare has great editing classes from beginner to expert level, so I jumped right into classes and started to wrap my head around the basics of editing. Soon, I was able to start producing stuff I was actually proud of. So if there's a new skill you're trying to learn in 2023, then Skillshare is absolutely the place to begin. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that'll match your goals. Heck, I may have inadvertently inspired you to create the next attache. And you can start today because by clicking on the link below, you can explore the Skillshare library completely free for one month. So what are you waiting for? Click on that link below, find that new skill, and get started today. The Swedes, in a healthy dose of self-deprecation, readily dismiss their cuisine as, quote, meat and fish with potatoes. And yes, there are a lot of dishes that resemble that, but I don't think that does this noble cuisine justice. There is a lot more to it than that. Traditional, delicious, home-cooked food, otherwise known as husmankost, runs the gamut from the internationally recognized and beloved meatballs and gravlax to this kropkakor, a potato dumpling filled with onions and pork, which is then boiled and you are served with melted butter and lingonberry jam. Or this, hash, otherwise known as piti panna. Meat, potatoes, onions chopped up, fried, as all good things in life are, topped with beetroot and a whole or fried egg. Absolutely mandatory toppings. Oh, that's good. Or herring. There's actually two kinds of herring you'll find in Sweden. Sill, which is found on the west coast and is almost invariably pickled. Or this, stroming, which comes from the Baltic. It's breaded, fried, served with mashed potatoes, a little sauce, absolutely perfect. Actually, that is a lot of meat and potatoes and fish, but there's nothing wrong with that at all. Swedes eat meatballs, it's comfort Ooh. food. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. With the sauces <laughs> and the potatoes, it's a classic. Food traditions, and for that matter, traditional food, are a double-edged sword. I have very mixed feelings about them. On the face of it, a tradition is something so universally beloved that a culture cannot conceive of itself without it. But it can also be an excuse to torture ourselves at a generational level with bland, outdated, or just plain gross food. Sweden has a tradition that absolutely belongs in the first column, fika. Fika is so well established that it's used as both a noun and a verb. It's established and enshrined in employment contracts. What is Fika? Fika is the simple tradition of taking coffee and a cake with friends, or Greg. <laughs> how wonderful, how perfect, how glorious, a tradition that I will absolutely defend to the death, and I am very obviously not Swedish. Speaking of coffee, Sweden's coffee habit puts it near the top of the charts for per capita consumption. Swedish coffee might be a little stronger than you're used to, but it's delicious nonetheless. Rather wonderfully, the second cup of coffee is traditionally free of charge in Sweden, although sadly, this is rarely the case at modern chains and franchises. Global economics ruining everything. And with your coffee to complete your Fika experience, you can enjoy one of Sweden's many, many delectable baked goods. Cannabolo or cinnamon roll is arguably the most popular, but there are so many varieties of incredible baked good that you can find all over Stockholm's amazing bakeries. And with our cholesterol maxed out, why not just cap it off with a Swedish guilty pleasure? Do lots of people in Sweden eat this? Yeah. Pe lots of people here, they like it. Yeah, much. When I, I look on the, my phone, everywhere, Aha. come here. Okay. Everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, what a beauty. There is no way that we could fit in all of the glorious food that Sweden has to offer. We'd be here, well, forever. But there's one item I feel compelled to bring to your attention, partly out of a sense of duty, and partly out of sadism. This, Tönsbörd Rolla, which I'm very sure I pronounced incorrectly, but it is, are you ready for this? Traditional flatbed filled with mashed potato, two hot dogs, lettuce, onions, jalapeno, mustard, ketchup, and topped off with shrimp salad. I have never seen anything like this before in my life. It is extremely popular. Anthony Bourdain called it 
quite literally the best drunk food. I'm not drunk, but I'm so excited to try, I, I try this. I'm running out of, out of words. I like the fork. I think that's a dainty little inclusion. Oh my God, oh my God, it, it shouldn't work. None of these things belong together and yet it's absolutely delicious. It should create a black hole and devour the universe that it even exists. But I'm so glad it does. An unexpected jewel in Stockholm's icy crown. Despite being part of the European Union, Sweden does not use the euro. They use their own currency, the krona, which means crown. In fact, very often when you're talking to a Swede in English, they will refer to the price of something in crowns. One thing to point out immediately is that Sweden is almost completely cashless. Cash is accepted almost nowhere. And this is a trend in Northern Europe and I am a big fan of it. Debit cards, credit cards, Apple Pay and Samsung Pay, however, accepted almost universally. Sweden, like much of the Nordics, is an expensive country when you compare it to much of Europe. Food, drink, sundries are all gonna feel a lot more expensive than most of us are used to. And on that note, let's do the rundown. A cup of coffee will cost you around 30 krona. A glass of beautiful Swedish beer will cost you around 70 krona. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're gonna pay 45 krona, or around four US dollars and 30 US cents. There aren't many places I can think of that are equally as charming in the winter as they are in the summer. That even on a cold, gray day, you are still drawn outside to explore and experience. And when you are ready to come inside and warm up again, every space, every restaurant, every cafe just seems, at the risk of sounding trite, cozy. Stockholm is one of those places. You won't feel the cold here, at least not as much, and you won't notice the short days and the long, dark nights. Why? Because you'll be too distracted by this gem of a city to notice any of that. 